Hey guys, Bada Bing here. Thanks for joining me today. I have just passed 5,000 YouTube subscribers. So to celebrate this milestone, I thought I'd share with you all the contents of my little toy gun armory. If you're new to the channel, I'm a big fan of gas blowbacks, so you're gonna see a ton of them in this video. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, and let's do this. I love Bond movies, so this was an appropriate choice. I present to you the Maruzen Volta PPKS gas blowback pistol. This has been in my collection for a number of years, and it's seen better days. It fires from a 22 shot magazine, which can only take on the weaker 144A type gas, and if one were to use something like green gas, the slide would probably blow apart, because it's made of ABS plastic. The hop-up is adjustable, but is terribly designed, and offers nothing even remotely related to accuracy. Still, this is a pistol which I've used in close quarters, and it's wiped the smiles off many people at my local CQB field. It's funny to see all the tactical dudes getting shredded by a tiny pistol, running off compressed mouse farts. It's simply magical. This is a movie prop edition which has a screw-on suppressor, although it's not concentric to the inner barrel, so it can't shoot straight through. Shame. Next we have Tokyo Marui's Glock 19 gas blowback pistol. At the time of filming it hasn't been out all that long. It's taken forever for TM to release a Model 19. The construction is solid, despite it being made of ABS plastic, as is the case with Japanese produced airsoft pistols. However, this does not mean that it's inferior. What it lacks in realistic materials, it gains in its performance, which is excellent. Like the PPK, it fires from a 22 round magazine. It's also compatible with TM's larger capacity Glock magazines. Its accuracy is decent, and for an all ABS handgun, it delivers crisp, fast shots. It's an excellent compact pistol that I'm glad to have within my collection. To watch the review, tap the link above. Another Turkey Marui pistol, and this time we're bathing in the glory of HK with the HK45 gas blowback pistol. This has been in my collection since 2014, and in that time, it's been used, abused, dropped, and frozen. It's still ready to take care of me when called upon, day or night. The scars across the slide and the frame lets you know how durable an all plastic pistol can be. The performance is probably the best I've ever experienced from an out-of-the-box gas blowback pistol. It's my go-to handgun of choice, which has features best suited to my preferences. The double, single-action hammer-fired system agrees with me, along with a gas-efficient 26-round magazine that delivers the goods even when it's cold. Staying with Heckler & Koch handguns now, here is my beloved USP9 full-sized gas blowback pistol by Tokyo Marui. I haven't had the heart to take this to a game yet. I don't care if it earns the reputation of being a safe queen, my HK45 participates in gunfights, so this doesn't have to. It has a roomy capacity of 26 BBs and delivers crisp snappy shots every time. The trademarks and proof markings makes this a great replica of a modern H&K classic. The Maruzen Type U, an open bolt gas blowback micro Uzi replica that has been discontinued for a number of years. The construction of this Uzi is pretty much all ABS plastic, so it's only rated for 144A equivalent gas. It has a high rate of fire too. 
using green gas would likely blow it to smithereens. When this was available, it retailed just over $100, making this a cheap, fun gun. This Uzi has been in my collection for 10 years, and it's never been skirmished, due to only having one 50 round magazine. Oh, that and it's terribly inaccurate. Tap the link above to see its review. This is the Secutor Bellum X CO2 blowback pistol, which was given to me by the folks at Zero Twenty Magazine for review. Massive thanks to them for giving me this handgun. It's a full metal CO2 blowback pistol that is based off the Beretta M92 series. Sadly, I have been a little behind in creating its review, and this is down to an issue that I've had with the pistol itself. I'm in the process of rectifying this problem, and I'll publish the review when it's complete. Breaking into my long guns now, with the Tokyo Marui Scar 16. This next generation recall AEG has been in my collection for several months, and I haven't had time to review it yet. I've skirmished it twice this year, and it's not too bad. You might find it weird that the only reason why I bought this rifle was merely as a vessel to mount my Elk Inspector DR. Look at it. Oh, worth it. Here we have the Tokyo Marui M4 MWS gas blowback rifle. Another TM? Jeez. It stands as one of the best gas blowback rifles I've ever had. This rifle was one of the first GBBRs off TM's production line when it was introduced at the end of 2015, and a rifle that I've featured many times on this channel. It hasn't changed much since I've got it. I'm not really a fan of up-to-date impressions or builds, so I've kept it pretty much like this. Classic SOP mod, just the way I like it. I've used it many times on the field and it's nothing but impressive right out of the box. Staying with the M4s now, here is the GHK Colt Trademarked M4 version 2 gas blowback rifle. The small improvements that they've made over the version 1 have brought this platform to the level which makes it one of the best M4 GBBRs out there. As I've said in its review, it has the best blend of performance, reliability and realism. The list of advantages to this system greatly dwarfs the few that stand against it. I've been asked so many times as to when I'm going to release the part 2 of the GHK vs Marui M4 video. Honestly, I can't say exactly when. Versus videos are difficult to put together, and these two rifles are so good that I need to spend a bit more time in the field with both rifles to come to a complete decision. Bear with me, it is coming. Continuing with the GHK now, and the next one is the 553. The most recent GBBR by GHK, and one of the coolest in my opinion. In the review I made of it, which you should totally check out by the way, I compared its shooting action to the G5. It shoots so sharp and fast, it's a really good experience. The full steel construction and durable Cerakote finish makes for a great candidate for anyone's collection. Custom SIG trademarked versions are available, as well as a 551 upgrade kit. Now, this isn't something that I would really brag about owning, 
it is what it is. And what it is, is a very old and battered Tokyo Marui AK-47S AEG. I've had this for years, and it served as one of those loner guns for friends that didn't have their own guns to play with. When I bought it, the previous owner wired it to Dean's. As I didn't have any batteries that shared that type of connection, I swapped it back over to Mini Tamiya's. As you can see, I did a great job. My expertise with electric guns is of the highest order. The gearbox still turns over, and has the charming old acoustics. This is from an age where it was a level playing field. A simpler time, and in my opinion, it was a better time. I have another AK in my collection, and it's probably my favourite. The GHK AKM gas blowback rifle. She's been with me for around 5 years, and it's such a fun gun to use. While the internals do leave a bit to be desired, for the most part it's been reliable and chatters away like all AKs do. The gas efficiency is very good too, being able to empty magazines on auto with hardly any cooldown. Cold weather performance isn't too bad either, it's done exceptionally well at regular Sunday games and milsome events. There's no other blaster I'd rather use when I play the villain. So here's the last item that I end the video with, and that's my HK XM8 gas blowback rifle. This has been a project of mine since 2012, and probably the most ambitious. It began life as a WE G36 gas blowback rifle, and I've converted it to accept XM8 AEG body parts. This has been built using the old and long discontinued GWS kit, which came with excellent HK markings. The idea was to scale back excess material from the G36 upper receiver in order for the handguard and upper receiver panels to fit. The lower receiver has been altered on the fly. I've got it to the point where it can actually cycle, and sometimes cycle with the same kind of kick like it used to, depending on the angle of the magazine. To be honest, I'm not sure if I can get it to a point where it'll be 100% operational like it used to be in a former life, but it's been an interesting build nonetheless. There are some improvements that need to be made in the lower receiver to secure the trigger box. Also, some original WEG 36 spare parts are required. As far as I'm aware, this is the only XM8 gas blowback rifle in the world. So, that's something. Not bad. It's getting there. This is my armory. What do you think? What am I missing? Is there anything that you would like to see within my collection? Leave a comment and let me know. Some of these are more attached to than others, so in six months' time, this photo may be completely different. If it is vastly different to how you see it now, I'll probably do another Armoury video, and I hope to see you then. So thanks for tuning in, guys, and thank you so much for the support over the past few years. To all of you that have always been there, and for those of you such as AMG, Wolf Armouries, GBLS UK, and Zero Twenty Magazine, that have supplied me with their soft products to look at and review, helping my channel grow. Thanks. While I'm not a popular YouTuber, it's nice to fly under the radar. I seem to attract an audience that are so chill and laid back, just like me. An audience that appreciates honest information. And let's not forget about the coffee. Gotta make time for the coffee. It's awesome to see comments from some of you saying that you watch my videos while enjoying a cup of coffee. That's awesome. You guys are the coolest, and I love making videos for cool people. 
If you want to show your support, liking, sharing, and subscribing really helps me out. Thanks for sticking around and getting me past 5,000 subs. For regular updates, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. So until next time, take care of yourselves. Catch you in a bit.